share it as soon as it comes up on my. Oh, it's clear. That's right. They, they improved the quality on this thing. <laughs> what? Let's see. I gotta share it. Hey everybody, it's QT Love. We're signing on, trying to get everything adjusted, but while we get started, if you'd like to post questions, we would love to uh, have your insight and thoughts as to what are some issues um, that you want to avoid, what are some tips you want to give, uh, what have you utilized in your marriage. I know we are not the only successful marriage out there, so hey, hey, hey. Sister Candice in the house. We appreciate all the love. Um, share the video. Please share, share. Sister Candice, how are y'all doing? <laughs> I'm still sharing. Good job there, so. <laughs> well, at least you know you can hear it. Yeah. All right, all right. There we go. Okay, so I think one of the things um, that was post from. Where did post that? From Elijah. Yeah. Um, we are trying to bring it up. Excuse us as we critique our process. <laughs> oh, there we go. We gotta go to your name. Here we go. I have to go to your name. Yeah. Uh, how are y'all doing? That's good. That's real good. We miss y'all. Um, hey, Brandon, what's going on? Oh, here we go. Go. Oh. I think he wanted to know just what did he want to know. He said, uh -huh. I'm going here. I got it. Okay. <laughs> All right, here we go. The question is. There we go. What should your wife and husband do to make each other feel appreciated? Okay, I'll go first. Uh, for my husband, I listen. He's a man of few words at times. So when he tells me something, especially something that will really bring him joy, I listen, I write it down, I become intentional about making sure that I fulfill whatever it is that he says he wants but doesn't necessarily need. I like to see him happy. So that's one of the things I do. I actually listen closely to him and I make it a priority to make that thing happen. For me, <laughs> I just, for me, it's more of a, just being more considerate of things. Mm -hmm. So it's if it's like extra cleaning up or just some things to help her out or just saying thank you for more, most things, opening doors, just things to make her feel special. Mm -hmm. You know, she feels special when I just do the little things. It's not even the big things all the time. It's the little things that count. Yeah. You know, it's the ones that like, okay, he didn't see that. He didn't see that. Right. And I really did see it. And then she feels special. That, you know, I just try to, you know, get some little bit of things. Oh, that's sweet. Detail. <laughs> just pay attention yes. to the detail. That's all it is. Yes. Um... So, you know, with that, that was the the only question we had at the moment. But we just want to do a backdrop about um, excuses. Making excuses. I think, uh, babe, you go ahead and lead off on, you know, how we're going to spearhead this conversation. Okay. You know, most, you know, arguments happen or, you know, situations happen because a problem occurred. And then one person, the male or the female, it's an excuse on what, the reason why something didn't get done or something happened. Right. And it's a big issue because, you know, once it, it piles up on each other, you know, excuses after excuse after excuse after excuse, and then that person gets tired. All you, oh, you feel it under excuses. You can't tell the truth or, you know, you have nothing to stand on because all you're doing is telling excuse. You got an excuse for everything. So I think the main thing is just, just to be forward, you know, re realize your mistake. Mm -hmm. And say, you know, my bad, and just, I won't do it again. You have to realize your mistakes and then not try to make them again. Mm -hmm. I think your sorry only holds as much weight as you allow it to. If you continue to use sorry for each and every moment um, that you said you would never do it again, it begins to gradually lose its effect. So if you're saying sorry, you need to treat it as, okay, I'm repenting from that action. I'm going to turn away, and whenever it arises again, I'm going to think about it and choose to make a better decision so that my sorry will not become a void. 
I think a lot of times, especially for uh, my husband and I, uh, if we begin to hear each other say sorry a lot about the same thing, I will look at him and I'm just going to speak for myself and say, look, don't tell me sorry anymore. Until your sorry will mean something not only to you, it means nothing to me. So don't tell me that you're sorry anymore. So I think that's the main thing that you want to keep in mind. If you're going to say sorry, make sure that sorry carries weight. Because if it carries no weight, then you may as well not even say it. Good point. <laughs> I see we got about six people watching. Anybody got any questions in the chat? Yes, we like to make it interactive. Um, we appreciate all of the support, you guys. This was something that, you know, we had just thought about doing, sharing our uh, journey through marriage and, and our relationship. And we would hear a lot of people say, you know, I've never seen a successful marriage, especially from a younger couple. And we wanted to be that vessel, be that light to show you that it is possible. You see all of the drama that can um, be perpetuated throughout a marriage, but we want to give you light. We want to give you something that you can actually strive for with tips that you can utilize. So thank you everybody for tuning in and supporting us. You really help us keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Sorry. You said we were talking about how sorry can lose its effect if you say it too often. Well, so, you know, for me, from my uh, experience, um, it's just more... Of just what we doing excuses. Mm -hmm. Okay, so like I said, being considerate. So mm -hmm. there's times where she can do something and she be like, "Oh, babe, I'm sorry," but is she really sorry? You know, for me, I don't. I know she ain't really, really sorry. I mean, she's just sorry to just make me feel better. But you gotta, you know, <laughs> it's just the fact when she put that, like she said, put that substance on it, that weight to it, and it's like, "Babe, I'm sorry," because it's like you realizing your fault. And when you realize your fault, you already know you you saying sorry out of a you got some feeling in your sorry. Or you just you know that you just knowing I hurt him or I hurt her, you know, some way that I didn't want them to feel that way. Right. And you know, we all experience it, you know, we experience it together all the time. Mm -hmm. But it's just more you just recognize it. You always just recognize what's going on and just be able to appreciate each other. Yeah. I think for me I look at my husband and I say I pause and I think about it. What if my husband were to say that to me? How would I feel? I know that's cheesy and content, but it manifests greatness when you're able to control what comes out of your mouth and your emotions, your tones, your whole delivery and communication. Well, you can press pause like that and change a whole trajectory that was headed for disaster and turn it around and make it a present or a gift to the ear that you're sending it to, that's magic. Because it's a lot of times where my husband can really make me want to just woo. But I have to press pause because I know my husband's heart. My husband loves me to the utmost level. I know that my husband would do anything for me at the end of the day. He's my ride or die. I mean, I know that I can lean on him. I know that if I say, hey, babe, look, I need some change. We need we need to do this, that, and the other. If I can count on nobody else, I can count on my husband. So I, I, I diligently check myself to make sure that what I am bringing to him is something that um, will show him that, yes, you did mess up, but you still are my king. You did mess up, but I still love you. You did mess up, but I'm going to love you better than anybody else could love you. I don't care how I'm feeling right now. Your emotions matter more to me, but I still want you to understand the repercussions of what just happened. So that's the way I think about it. How would that affect my husband? And then vice versa, how would I receive that if he was telling it to me? If I'm not going to receive it well, I know he's not going to receive it well. So that's just how, we, how I communicate with my husband. And not have to make excuses. <laughs> yeah, babe. <laughs> I'm playing with Faith. <laughs> so now, what did you come up with? I was saying that I look at... <laughs> I was saying that before I speak any negative word, I would rather press pause. All right, there we go. Yeah, okay. yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Same for me. I mean, it's just... I think about what I say. Sometimes I don't. And it, it, it hurts me, so... You know, I try to be more observant on what I think about and what I say because, you know, them little words or that, that little backlash sometimes can hurt each other. And, you know, when you hurt your mate, for me, it hurts me as well because she's part of me. So, you know, 
when that sorry comes around, like, I'm sorry. But it's like, man, because now I didn't, you know, put some steps down where, you know, them steps ain't pulling away so fast because it's already in her system. So, you know, just having the, that apologetic, you know, you apologize so much, it's going to just rub off like dust. <laughs> so, like I said, recognize your mistakes and, you know, utilize your brain and say, you know, okay, I'm not going to do this again. I'm not going to do that again. Just like you at work. You make too many mistakes at work, you're going to get fired. You can't yeah. just say your boss, man, I'm sorry, man. I did that three times in a row. My bad. <laughs> I didn't. I just drove to destroy like ten thousand dollars worth of parts. My bad. You go home. You go get suspended or something. Mm, mm. And there ain't no suspension in relationship. Well, it is kind of a suspension relationship, but it really ain't no suspension. It's more of a you know y'all ain't talking to each other for a while. <laughs> mm -hmm. I guess that is kind of a suspension. I guess that is a suspension because it can slowly deteriorate yeah, your right. foundation. True. Just like in a home, when you're looking at a home something that you want to offer your family. You're looking at your foundation. You're looking at your roof. You're looking at the main components that will either add value or subtract value from this transaction. So that's the same thing with words. What are you saying to build your household? Will what you say edify your husband? Will what you say really give the meaning to what you're feeling? Or will it just allow you to feel justified and just spew out whatever you want to say? I think having clarity in that instance will really, really make you masters of controlling yourself, your impulses, and how the other person feels. So right now we're hitting about, I ain't trying to, we ain't trying to keep this too long. We had 11 minutes. You know, if you guys have any questions, put it in the comments, please. You know, we are answering any questions right now. Cause I know in previous streams that we always, we'll be in the mode and be going and next you know, it's like 30 minutes, about 45 minutes. And next you know, uh, the people didn't put in questions. And we didn't get to answer them, so I don't want people to feel like they've been left out. Right. And we're trying to be more um, aware of our viewing audience with questions because I know this is all new for me, so you guys could have like a million questions up and I would just look as I'm just talking to my husband. I mean, because this is how we talk, but I have to realize that we're talking for you. So we would love to make this as interactive as possible and it'll help me learn to appreciate those who are watching. So help me learn. I would appreciate questions. I would appreciate any feedback um, that you may have. You know, marriage is a beautiful thing. Marriage can be a blessing, but marriage can also tear you apart, like tear you down to where you don't even want to love again. And if we are able to reach that one marriage who was saying, look, I'm about to throw in the towel. If we could say anything to you, we would say that God is able. I know that we um, make reference about the Lord. We serve Jesus. We serve God. We believe in the Holy Spirit. Um, but there was times in our marriage where, to me, it was not worth the headaches. It was not worth the effort. But I had to talk to the Lord and ask him, Lord, why, why are we together? Why do you want me with him? Why did I fall in love with him? Lord, show me again why this is who you want me to be with. Because I'm ready to walk. I'm ready to quit. You know, and this was like years back, um, but God has really done a mighty work. But, you know, he began to show me that a lot of the issues are not my husband's. A lot of them are me, but he doesn't allow me to wallow in my pity party. Like, oh, babe, I know that you went through a lot growing up. And no, my husband, he's like, babe, I know, I know you've been through that. But look, what, what else can we do now? Okay, I need you to be more vocal. And I'm like... How dare you? Do you not know what I've been through? But it's like he, he brought a side of me out that needed to be developed. It was the side of me that I didn't want anybody to notice because I wanted to always have it together. But he allowed me to really put to test what I wanted to be. If I want to say I have it all together, he's going to show me, you know, the areas that I need improvement on. And that's what I love about you. Because you don't look at me as, you know, um, the end all be all, the best thing. Well, sometimes you do look at me as the best thing going on. But, I mean, you call me on my crap. If it's crap, you call me on my crap. And I like that about you. I appreciate that because with that, 
There's nothing another man can say to me that will give me any revelation that will make me say, oh, you are just something so nice, so refreshing. No, my husband already tells me that. My husband already tells me I'm beautiful. He already tells me I'm smart. He already tells me that he doesn't want to be with nobody else but me. So there's nothing else nobody can say to me that can validate me any much more than what he just told me. So I appreciate that. I did. <laughs> I love my wife. <laughs> you know, for me, I had to learn a lot, you know, coming from a, a household where, you know, I was playing the game all the time. Like, we talked this before about this before, and I used to play the game all the time, you know. And I talked to our, my apostle about it, and it's basically, it's a state of isolation that we used to be in, because, you know, you used to be in by yourself. And when you get another person with you, you know, my girlfriend, and we got married, it's just... I couldn't break it, and it was hard for me to break it. So I had to do the same thing. I had to ask for the Lord to help me break this issue I have because back when we first started in marriage, I was on the game 24. I mean, it was back when online first came out. I got friends online, and we used to just play. And I got to that point where, you know, she was by herself, and she wasn't. She was mad at me because I was on the game all day, and next you know, you know, she there by herself. And it's been like that for a long time. I mean, I can say it for a long time, but it was more. I I worked with it for a long time, and I finally got through it. And you know, I don't play the game as much as no more, as much as I used to. So you know, it helped our relationship because she's at that point she's gonna throw the Xbox out the window. I was, but, <laughs> but you know, it helped me though because you know I was just in a mode where it was me and the TV or me, yeah, me and the game and people online, and I didn't care what was around me. I just did my thing and. I didn't care if I left the house the whole day because that was just me. That's how I grew up. That's where I came from. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when I did go outside, when I was in high school, you know, with the friends, but the friends, you know, we was in Fort Wayne. There were no friends. It was just me and her. So my friends was online. And so I had to learn and adjust to my friend is right here in front of me because she was my best friend. And I needed to, you know, take care of her and do things for her that I wasn't doing. Mm -hmm. It was just a learning phase. Mm -hmm. And I learned and I gained a lot of stuff from that. And the Lord helped me, you know, make her feel special. And, you know, I apologized many times. I said, that's when apology just disintegrated because it was just sorry after sorry after sorry. And so I just had to learn to appreciate my wife and just learn to be with her, Amen. be with somebody else other than myself. And I, and I had to learn that I'm not in competition with the game. That I didn't have to try to be as fun as the game. Like, I was good enough as who I am. Um, and, you know, I would try to do things that, you know, put a little spark in our marriage. Things that, you know, he would appreciate. And he liked that. But, you know, like he said, he would <clears throat> just revert back out of, you know, a historical pattern. Which was just him in the game. And I understood that. And he was worth the effort and time that it took to get him over that hump. Because there was some humps that I had to get over too. I'm not sitting up here like I didn't have any issues because I had a lot of issues. Um, and my husband had to talk to me about my mouth. Because, you know, I can be very smart mentally, but I can say some smart things that could tear a person down. Um, just with my words. And he helped me realize how powerful my words really could be if I used them in the wrong manner. So, I mean, that was that was a struggle for me, learning how to say what I needed to say appropriately and understanding that no matter how justified I felt in my feelings, it's all about delivery. So, with that being said, um, yes, I appreciate everybody. Sister Candice, um, Ashley, uh, Sister Ruby, Sandra, all of y'all, we see you. We appreciate you. Um, Pastor Lacey, Amber, Brother Ed, or Ed, you know, we appreciate you guys for uh, coming how through. Uh, how old are y'all? We are 30 years old. And we Unfortunately. Had, <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I like we hit the, well, I like 32, but you, I was liking them 20s better. I did like those 20s. I didn't look at you like, <laughs> those oh, 20s was good. Yeah, we did. We now you pushing 30, you like, oh, shoot, we around the corner from 40. So you was a little farther from 40 when you was in 20s. Right? And then uh, how long have we been married? We've been married 10 years. Mm -hmm. 07. Mm -hmm. August. Yeah, you, you, I'm, so, I'm glad you finally remember something. Sometimes he asks me and I don't know. I have to think about it. 
<laughs> but yeah, we've been married for 10 years and um, it's been a blessing. It's been a blessing to grow. You know, um, the fact that we know that our mistakes could be somebody else's window of opportunity to grow from. And if we don't share it, then we look as though, you know, we're picture perfect. We aren't. We are definitely not. We have a lot of issues that we have overcome by the grace of God. Um, some things weren't as pretty as others, and a lot of them were really threatening and could have took us out. But um, when you begin to ask the Lord to work on you and not the other person, that's what really, really changes the game. So um, with that being said, if there are not any more questions, let me do my run through. Anybody got any questions? Let's call for questions. Uh, but if you want more from us, this is why she's checking that. QT Love. Search for QT Love on Facebook. It's our Facebook page, our official Facebook page. We post on there as well. She does a lot of posting of like beautiful sayings or something, you know, of that nature. So you can keep your day going, you know, get something out your day, every day. She posts about it every day. Mm -hmm. And so also we got a YouTube page. We ain't posted on there because we've been a little busy yeah. on, the, on the YouTube page. But it's QT Love. You just search QT Love on YouTube. Yep. And we do the exact same thing there. We'll post a clip, like a preview clip on the Facebook page, and it'll lead you right into the YouTube video. Mm -hmm. And that's how we do that. Do you have any questions? I want to shout out my dad. Um, my dad, oh my gosh. Um, he is the man. I don't care what all we have gone through. I love my dad. Um, he has been making strides to better himself, to really look at the man in the mirror and become a better example for his kids. So Mr. Hassan, from your daughter, I love you and I appreciate you. Keep working towards it and I can't wait for this Saturday. Um, you still mean the world to me. So, you know, you're worth it too. So I can't wait to get together, but if there's nothing else said, QT signing out, peace.